In the late 1700s, most people worked in the fields on land they did not own. Those who owned the land, called aristocrats, lived refined lives in elegant manor houses. Servants raised their children and did their housework. The landowners and the people who worked for them depended upon each other. It was a system that had existed for centuries. In towns across England and the United States, a series of extraordinary innovations would alter the way people lived and worked for the next 150 years. Inventors had found new ways to harness nature's energy. They built new kinds of machines powered by water, steam, and coal. The new machines replaced hand-powered tools. They did the same work, only cheaper and faster. Much of the work was done outside the home in specially designed buildings, the first factories. Mechanization began in the textile mills of England, where one machine attached to a spinning wheel could do the work of 50 people. Fuel, clothing, and food all became more affordable. With the development of locomotives and steamboats, manufactured goods could now be sold halfway around the world. Families moved from the villages of their ancestors to new industrial towns. And a new class of people emerged, workers who produced goods. Industrialists, the people who owned the factories, employed hundreds, sometimes thousands of people. And they made enormous profits in their industrial centers. But while the Industrial Revolution brought wealth to some and jobs for others, it came with a price tag. Pollution from coal-powered factories turned the cities black. Lack of housing created the first urban slums. And the demand for more and more goods and higher profits brought the exploitation of workers, including children. Some of the worst conditions were seen in the textile mills of New England. In the 1830s, a 10-year-old mill girl described her life. We were paid two dollars a week, and the working hours of all the girls extended from five o'clock in the morning till seven in the evening, with one half hour for breakfast and for dinner. It was the hiring of children, some as young as five years old, throughout the 1800s and early 1900s, that outraged the public. Workers and reformers protested. They formed unions and associations, and fought for government regulations to limit the workday and protect children. These laws helped address many of the abuses brought on by the Industrial Revolution. Today, we are in the middle of another revolution, a technological revolution. We live in what's called the global village, because we can connect with people around the world as if they lived next door. And we can now work anytime and anywhere. We will have to wait and see where this new revolution leads.